Welcome back to Catholic Conundrum. Today we're here with the overnight mom, Kenzie. Hi! So we're going to talk a little bit about relationships and love and courtship and all of that. So first of all, you don't have to worry, it's not like one of those relationship advice videos that you'll find literally everywhere on the internet. And it's not like a chastity talk that you'll find at a retreat. This video is just like, what is love and relationship and why is it important to us humans and how can we live it out practically? Which is why we have Kenzie here today. There's so much more to love and relationships than we tend to realize. As a culture, we all tend to be very superficial, not all of us obviously, but a lot of people, and especially this way in the way of love, where we tend to view it as not really animalistic, but almost. It's like, I love this person, and therefore they're going to consume my world, and I'm going to write love songs about them, and, and all sorts. And the loving thing about the church is that we take love and we don't dumb it down, we expand it because God is love, in case you haven't heard. So humans for all time have been always pursuing love. They've been pursuing love, relationship, and it's not just like finding a mate, which obviously we do, but we are looking for friendship, like true authentic friendship. We want something more. So the reason that humans are so attracted to relationship and love is because of God. And obviously God is love, but he's so much more than just love because he's a relationship of three people. Obviously there's the Father, and there's the Holy Spirit, and there's the Son. So the Father loved the Son so much that the Holy Spirit is a person. Like, that's how much they love. So we have that to look up to. And because we are made in God's image, we crave relationship. We crave this relationship with God himself. And a way that we can mimic this is in our own lives, in our own cravings for love and relationship. JP II, before he was Pope John Paul II, the man we all know and love, when he was just a little priest in Poland, wrote a book called Love and Responsibility. So in this book, he talks about these two different types of love, and he talks about these two different types of attraction. He calls, well, he has different names for them, but I'm just gonna simplify it and say one's emotional attraction, and one is physical attraction. So say a person's like walking down the street and they're like, that is a pretty dude. That's physical attraction. Now there's a completely other different type of attraction where you get to know someone and you really like the way that they think or you like the way that they feel or you like their personality, like something internal, that's emotional attraction. And that often happens by spending time with the person, getting to know the person on the inside. And the church calls us to take both of those in mind when we enter a relationship, which a lot of people do do. But the church calls us to something more. It calls us to this higher knowledge of love. So it's not just me focused, it's other focused. It's not just how can this person fulfill a longing of my heart? I love this person, therefore I'm going to pursue them. This calls for discernment of what God's will is in this relationship. So you could have feelings for this person, and if the other person doesn't reciprocate, Obviously, God's not calling you to do it just yet. Um, but if you both have that longing for each other, I guess, then God can come into the mix and then the relationship can grow from there. So at this point, I would like Kenzie, I'd like to invite her to share a little bit of her story and how she's taken these, all these different feelings and all these different emotions and, and how she knows that we're called to live this out in God's world that he's created for us and how she's lived this out in her own life so far. Oh, thank you. Yeah, so that all makes total sense. And I think the key here is discernment and being open to God's will for our lives. So I, from a very early age, felt the call to be a wife and a mother. And as I went through life, I never ended up finding a boyfriend and so I'm thinking, okay, well, I desire this so much and it just hasn't happened yet, you know, maybe that, this isn't my call. And so I got to a point in my own life where I was just completely open to whatever God had planned for me. 
I desired marriage and wanted that myself, but I thought, well, if he wants me to be a nun or wants me to live the single life, I will do that if that's what he wants. So I came to a point when, with a lot of prayer and patience and uh, talking to a lot of people and just trying to grow in my own spiritual life and walk with Christ, um, I came to a point where it did very much seem like I was definitely being called to marriage, but I just had to be patient and you know, really let God be in control of that as much as I wanted to control it. And so I think that is why my husband came into my life at the timing that he did. And it, it was really just beautiful when I look back and see how everything ended up timing wise and how, how well God orchestrates our lives and other people's lives to join with ours. It's, it's really incredible. So yeah, with my husband, we met both um, being involved with the youth group program at our church. And so that's a great place to meet is at church, but we didn't join it to meet somebody. It just naturally happened because we were both two individuals just striving to grow in our faith, striving to grow in deeper relationship with Christ. And, and there's this visual uh, representation of this where um, you have two people and the closer they grow to God up here, the closer they get to each other. And that's so true. The more that you individually are drawing closer to God and growing that relationship, um, the better that your all of your other relationships will be, but especially in a romantic sense. Mm -hmm. And so that's the case with us. We were both two people m mostly focused on glorifying God, and then we met each other, and then it was something that kind of we started to do together. And prayer became a huge part of our relationship from day one. On our first date, we went to Mass, so that was a great way to start a relationship. And from there, we incorporated prayer in our daily life with each other. When we would talk on the phone before we got off, we would say a prayer. And before we left, after we hung out or had a date night, we prayed together. And the amazing thing about that is we've been able to carry it into our marriage. And we kind of had this like routine, our way of praying together, specific prayers we'd say together, and then kind of our own way of doing it. And it's been so nice because I know a lot of women will tell me that they feel awkward praying with their husband and they're married. And so I think it starts before you're even married. And, um, and if you are in a place where you have a boyfriend or a girlfriend and they won't pray with you, I think that that is something to be aware of because you want somebody who just loves God the way that you do. Because if they love God, they will have more love for everybody in their lives, including you. And I think sometimes we're selfish and we we're, we get consumed with, I want a boyfriend because I want to hold hands and walk through the hallway at school or whatever it is, like those fun things, which are great things, but you know, we have to really focus and, and be intentional about the relationships that we have. And you want to take your time when whoever you're with, if you're in that phase of wanting to be boyfriend and girlfriend, dating, courtship, whatever the way you call it, you know, being very intentional is so important because it sets you up for success when you do get married. And so that to me is very important. And all, all of that time where you feel like you're just longing for relationship and just wishing you found somebody, that time is so important because it is forming you into the person that you're going to be in the future. So I think as a Catholic, just like I said, the key is being super intentional, growing in your individual relationship with God. And when you do those things, if you are called to marriage, um, when you find somebody, everything will be so seamless and you'll be able to be stronger together. So obviously, like, great story. Like, I just, <laughs> I love your guys' relationship because I was in that youth group yeah, awesome. and that's how I met Kenzie. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that is so funny. I forgot. Yeah. And, um, yeah, just seeing them grow as a couple has just been, like, totally Aww. amazing and so beautiful. Um, I was just wondering, how have you practiced emotional chastity in your relationship, like before you were married, and then how did that transition once you got engaged and were preparing for marriage? Sure, so, so yeah, so one of the things that I noticed was different about my husband, and I didn't really notice it at the time, but looking back I do, is with every other person that I met and was maybe interested in, I had almost like a giddy excitedness about it, which wasn't necessarily a bad thing, but with him, I just felt so at peace. 
And I, that's one thing that I just remember so much was peace. And it was as if it was just happening and I wasn't trying to force a relationship. And that was the first time that I didn't feel like it was all me trying to force this and make it work. I was just letting God work, essentially. And so in terms of emotional chastity, like I'm rooting for him almost where mm, I, like that. I want him to grow closer to God and I don't want to do anything that will interfere with that. So um, I wanted him to be successful. I wanted him to grow deeper in his faith. The one thing a lot of well-meaning Christian Catholic girls do is they meet somebody and they almost think that they're going to save them. They're going to leave them, lead them to heaven, that they're going to so help them, which is a good thing to help, of course, and that is the goal. But you want to make sure when you are looking for somebody that they already have themselves like established, for lack of a better term. But you want them to already have that relationship with Christ. You don't want to be the one pulling them and dragging them to church. It's great if you can get people going to church. But a relationship has to work both ways because sometimes I'm weaker and I need him to kind of get me back on track. And in our relationship, there were different times like that where it was kind of one of us needed, you know, somebody to pull us up, whether it be if you have problems in your family that are stressing you out or um, when you're tempted to, you know, maybe make a bad decision together. You know, you need somebody who's there who's saying like, no, we're not going to do this. We're going to be strong. Like you can push through this, whatever your difficult situation is that comes up. And even in marriage, it's the same thing because once you have kids there's so many days where you just feel exhausted and and weak and you need somebody who's that spiritual leader to help you stay on track and so um, I think don't get too caught up in trying to rescue anybody or lead them you want somebody who's already at your same spiritual level mm -hmm. in a sense and that was the first time i found that in anybody was with my husband is it was i looked at him and i said wow this is somebody who i want to be more like who i think is amazing and i want my spiritual life to be as awesome as his is because he's like way ahead of where I am in so many ways and and that's the whole thing like we're all the goal is heaven mm -hmm. and in marriage we want to get each other to heaven that's the whole goal it's not to have fun together that's nice you do but that's not the goal and so you really want to think of your soul when you're meeting people and dating and interested in people and even just living on your own I think sometimes it's hard because you do feel lonely and you feel like you have that desire that craving that is put in our hearts because we're we're made for relationship and community and and everything but yeah just making sure to from an emotional standpoint not get too excited that the relationship is there and always just keep it so focused on Christ all right so the relationships that we've kind of been talking about in this video have been mostly around this idea of courtship, which I understand is like horrible connotations. Like, oh my gosh, like what courtship? <laughs> That's like for the Amish and like the 18th century people. But like, let's just like take it away from those connotations at the moment and just take it at face value. And what courtship is all about is taking a couple and bringing God into the mix and being intentional about where you're heading and being intentional that like God is the goal and having bringing him into the mix and using that discernment to discern marriage as a couple together that's what courtship is all about that's so important that the goal when you're meeting somebody in dating or courting them is you want to figure out if this is somebody that you want to marry mm -hmm. not just getting complacent in the day to day but you really want to be intentional about mm -hmm. that for sure yeah like dating isn't a state of life yeah dating is to get to marriage and like if you're called to marriage you're called to date to get to marriage and then if you're not called to marriage then you're either called to religious life or the single life well, and the thing about doing that is it leads to broken hearts and hurt feelings because one person may be going into the relationship thinking, oh, maybe we'll get married one day, and the other person isn't as serious. So the person who wants marriage may get led on and years will go by, and you're wasting all of this time where you could have been discerning with somebody who's actually serious. So the, these guidelines and things we're talking about they're for, here for us to help us to prevent us from being broken and hurt and wounded in our relationships. Yeah, and this all goes with God's plan for creation as well. 
and the whole dating by itself just goes against this creation that God has given us and so that's why it leads to the brokenness is because that's not what we're made for. So this is just one of many videos that you can find about courtship, relationships, love and all of that. There's tons on Formed and on YouTube and just all over the place. So if this didn't fill all your questions and like, you know, you don't feel like you know everything about relationships, which I hope not because <laughs> there's so much more to learn. Yeah, then you can find all of those things. Yes, a few people that maybe you could look up that I have found to be very thought-provoking and helpful are Kimberly Hahn, who, yes, wife of Scott Hahn, amazing couple, um, Chris Stefanik, and Jason Everett. They're all very good, and obviously there's loads more, like, yeah, there's loads more that you can just find anywhere, but those are like the three main ones that are very good, I found. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. There's gonna be links in the description to all of the formed stuff and to Kenzie's channel, The Overnight Mom. Thank you for joining us thank on the channel. Thank you for having me. <laughs> so good. Aww. Yes. Thank you. And if you did like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you can see more like it. We have a few more videos with her. And yes. So thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Bye. Bye.